Remember this product? This was a great review and a good soldering iron. I wonder if they will make a second version of it. Just kidding guys, that's exactly what I have here today. It's review time and I have another product for you. I hope that you remember this awesome soldering iron, the TS100. I was more than amazed with the quality and performance of this small product. Well today we finally have the TS80, which is the new version, and I have to say that it's even better. I pre-ordered this before the official release, but it took a few more days to arrive. I've used it, tested it, opened it up and all I have to say is that it's an amazing product, with good design. So let's make an unbox, test it and tear it down. So let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. This is the box that you receive. Simple and practical design. Inside we first have the unit and the soldering tip, and below that we have a white cardboard box. Inside of that we have the supply, a heat resistant silicone USB cable, the ground alligator clip and an Allen key. And that's it, this is all that you receive inside of the box. So there you have it, the TS80 portable soldering iron. Look how small it is. And if we take the handle off, it is even smaller. I mean all the electronics are inside of this small metal tube. And yes, this case is made out of metal now, and that's just great, since that will make it very strong. So let's plug the 3.5mm jack of the soldering tip and analyze the product. First of all, for the supply we now have a USB Type-C connector, instead of the DC5525 plug like in the previous model. The voltage is also different, 9 volts in this case, and a power up to 18 watts, way less than the TS100, that could reach up to 70 watts. But that will make this iron perform worse than the old one? Well, we will see later. The OLED display size is the same as in the previous model. We still have two push buttons for control. The size is smaller than the old one. 95mm long and 13mm diameter. And what I like most is the distance from the hand to the tip. It is very short. Now the tip itself looks high quality. It comes with a 3.5mm jack so it is very easy to replace. It has this metal heatsink here, with holes in it, that I guess that should prevent the heat transfer to the handle and only keep the tip hot and I think this is a great idea. Without the tip handle, as you can see, the solder iron unit it is very, very small. Ok, so let's power it on. Plug the supply adapter that will give us around 9 volts. Now plug the USB and it will automatically start. There is no on and off button. The USB cable is made out of heat resistant silicone and it is very light. We will test it later. Now if I press the left button, it will start heating but I press the right button for settings. Enter settings and long press the left button to select the desired settings on the menu. You can set the temperature limits, sleep time and also the output power. It is a little bit strange that the power could go over 18 watts. I can go up to 24 watts. We also have voltage limits, the fixed temperature and an interesting thing, you can select the used hand so the OLED screen will invert itself for left handed, that's a nice touch. Ok, so long press the right button and exit the menu. Now press the left button and start heating, and first let's measure the heating time. Ok, there you have it, we get to 300 degrees in around 24 seconds. Ok, the first test and the most difficult is soldering a MOSFET to a copper board. Hmm, it took some time but it kind of did the job, we definitely need a bit more power for this job. 
I did another test and it soldered the component to the board, but the solder looks kind of cold. But hey, this is a difficult job even for my soldering station, for an 18 watts iron is more than enough. But now, here I've melted a big solder ball with no problems. So these solder components or filling big tracks must be very easy. I was able to melt this ball of solder of this PCB with no problems and filling the tracks with solder for this and other PCBs. For only 18 watts it is more powerful than I expected. Ok, so now I power the TS100 with a 11 volts battery and the TS80 with the 9 volts adapter and give a speed test. The TS80 seems to get to 300 degrees faster, even at lower voltage. For the next test I want to thin a thick wire. I had no problems filling this wire with solder, the heat transfer is just great. Next simple test is to measure the temperature with an external thermocouple and compare the values. It is a little bit over the temperature mark on the OLED display, but my thermometer is not that precise neither. Another small test, the wet sponge. Let's see how fast the temperature drops. I can say that it's a pretty good temperature control and guessing that the display will show the real value. Finally, let's see if the USB cable can withstand the heat. And yes, it takes it like a champ, it is a heat resistant silicon cable. Guys, now let's open it. To do that, you first have to remove the button's cover. And here, using the included Allen key, open the case. Now the top part will pop out. And here is the ultra small PCB that does everything for this unit. I take out the PCB. And look how small it is, banana for scale. On the top part we have the OLED display, the STM32 microcontroller, the buttons and what I think is the accelerometer for sleep mode detect. On the back we first have the USB connector, then the back converter that will supply the digital components. Then we have the MOSFET that will provide power to the heater. And here we have the op-amp for the temperature sensing from the thermocouple and of course the 3.5mm jack and that's it. I can see some tracks with solder, so those must be for the power that goes to the heating element inside of the tip. I'm still amazed how small this is. Ok, now let's close it back. So, the final conclusion. Great product and for sure an improvement from the last version. It is a little bit smaller and in my opinion, better case and better firmware. Gets hot very fast and even for 18 watts iron, it has a lot of power due to the high quality of the tip, which is also easy to replace in case you damage it or you want a different shape. It is low power so we could use it with external power bank or a battery so it is portable. When you buy it, there are some kits that already include a power bank a carry leather case or the iron stand, so I will leave some links below for different options for you to buy this product. I like the distance to the tip, the animated display icons, it can reach up to 400 degrees and that's the real value, not just a label on the screen. It comes with a power adapter and the USB cable is heat resistant. The heating element is integrated in the tip and the heat performance for 18 watts are better than expected. Ok, so one questionable aspect is the use of only USB connector, since that will limit the use of limited current power banks, external batteries or power supplies since you will need some sort of adapter. For now, there are no replacement tips available, but there will be soon. I was waiting for some time for this soldering iron, and I'm satisfied with the final product. The price is a little bit higher than the TS100, but I'm sure it will get lower. So we have good performance, strong metal case and beautiful design, removable tip with 3.5mm jack, USB connector and low input voltage, so you could use it outside of the workshop. 
it is faster and performs a bit better than the TS-100, even with lower power. Let's wait for future versions of the firmware and new options. I hope that you enjoyed this review of the TS-80 soldering iron. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell in order to see my future videos. And also click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. And remember, if you consider helping my workshop, check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.